Hello again, and welcome to Advanced Physics for High School Students. This is Lesson 5, and it is entitled Forces in Equilibrium. In this lesson, we apply vector methods to situations in which several forces simultaneously act on an object, but the object doesn't change its motion. Here's an image of a crane. You've seen these at construction sites and loading docks. They're ubiquitous in our society, useful for lifting and moving heavy loads. To be effective, they must be engineered for usefulness and safety, and somebody has to design it. You see this point at the very top? Huge forces are applied at that point, all at the same time. And if the crane isn't to collapse, that point must be strong enough to support them. Since that point isn't changing its motion, i.e., since that point isn't accelerating, then we say that point is in equilibrium. Equilibrium means all the forces acting on the object at that point must balance each other. So how many forces are acting on this point? Well, let's sketch them. There's the supporting force of the structure pushing upward. We'll call that force F1. And there are several angled diagonal forces acting downward. Two to the left, we'll call them F2 and F3, and a couple to the right one of which appears it might be much stronger than the other due to the size of the support. We'll call them F4 and F5. Our job is to figure out quantitative information about each of these forces. How many pounds of force are acting? Or if you're talking about metric units, how many newtons of force are acting? And we want to learn the direction at which each of these forces act. What angle do they make at the point in question? That's what this lesson is about, developing methods for analyzing forces acting in different directions. We won't unpack all the information in this particular crane. We don't have enough data given to us to sort all that out. But the methods we'll develop can be applied to sort out that problem were we given adequate data. The point is, in a vector sum, the net force acting on this point has to be equal to zero. And mathematically, we write that this way. The sum of the forces is equal to zero. The Greek letter in front of the F is a sigma, and mathematically, that means that you add up whatever comes up behind it. In this case, for this crane, we would say that F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus F4 plus F5 is equal to zero. This is a vector equation, and in order to analyze it in a vector way, we must resolve each of these forces into horizontal and vertical components, and then look at the horizontal components independently and the vertical components independently. We write that in this way. The sum of the forces in the x direction are equal to zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. So that means we would resolve F1 into X and Y components. We would resolve F2 into X and Y components. And the same for F3 and for F4 and for F5. And then we would put them into these two equations. Here's what it looks like. Now I have two equations. And I have X components in one and Y components in another. Your authors describe how to approach these problems, and I encourage you to read and digest their description in your textbook. Let's take up a couple of examples and figure out how to apply this in some specific problem. Example 5.1. This system of forces is in equilibrium. Find the values of T1 and T2. The vertical force is 72 newtons. Let me make a remark. The symbols that your authors use for forces and the symbols that I use for forces will be a little bit different. So instead of calling this T1, I'm going to call this F1. And instead of calling the other force at an angle T2, T meaning tension, I'm going to call it F2. And I'm going to call the 72 Newton force F3. And in our vector notation, we would say that F1 plus F2 plus F3 is equal to zero because this system is in equilibrium. So now I need to actually figure out what are the X and the Y components or expressions for X and Y components of F1 and F2 and F3. 
Let me remark that first of all, F1 appears to be completely horizontal. There is no vertical part of F1. So I could say that F1x is equal to F1, the magnitudes are equal, and F1y is equal to zero because it's not vertical at all. And likewise, F3 has no horizontal component. F3 is completely vertical. So F3x would be equal to zero, and F3y is equal to 72 newtons. Let's write those facts down. I must pay attention to directions because these are vectors. So one might write that F3y is equal to negative 72 newtons because it's in the downward direction if I call up positive. And likewise, F1x is equal to a positive number. We don't know what it is yet. We've got to figure it out. But whatever it is, it will be positive because we call to the right, positive. Now we need to figure out components for F2. And we don't know what those numbers are going to be, but we do know that whatever they are, F2 has an X component that's to the left and a Y component that's upward. Let's sketch those in. You'll notice that I've made a rectangle out of F2, and I've made the vector F2 the diagonal of that rectangle, and the X component of F2 lies along one leg of that rectangle, and the Y component of F2 lies along another leg. Now I want you to look at this right triangle that has the F2x in it. And I see that F2 is the hypotenuse of that right triangle, and F2x is the adjacent side of the 55 degree angle. So I could write that the cosine of 55 degrees, and you need to make sure your calculator's in degree mode, is equal to the adjacent side, F2x, divided by the hypotenuse, F2. And likewise, I see that the sine of 55 degrees would be the opposite side, which is F2y, divided by the hypotenuse, F2. So now I can have expressions for F2x and F2y. F2x is equal to F2 times the cosine of 55 degrees, and F2y is equal to F2 times the sine of 55 degrees. So now I have all three of my forces, expressions for horizontal and vertical components of those forces. Now I'm ready to apply the condition of equilibrium. The net force acting at this point on the object must be equal to zero. This means that in a vector sum, F1 plus F2 plus F3 have got to be equal to zero. Now I'll use my X component and my Y components equations in order to put in the expressions. The sum of the forces in the X direction are equal to zero, and the sum of the forces in the Y direction are equal to zero. Let's begin with the X forces. In this case, I have F1X plus F2X plus F3X are equal to zero. Here we need to be careful with our signs. I see that F1 is to the right, and that F2X is to the left. So when I write the expression for F2x, I need to make sure that it has a negative sign. Let's substitute what we have for each of those components. F1x is equal to F1. F2x is equal to negative F2 cosine of 55 degrees. F3x is equal to zero. So there's one equation. F1 minus F2 cosine 55 degrees plus zero is equal to zero. Now, I don't know what F1 is, and I don't know what F2 is, but if I could find what one of them are, I could figure out what the other one is. Let's solve that equation for F1. So if I could find a number for F2, then I know that that number times the cosine of 55 degrees would be equal to F1. There's one equation. Let's move on now to the vertical equation. The sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. I need F1y plus F2y plus F3y equal to zero. Again, I need to pay attention to signs. If we're calling up positive and down negative, then the way that I would substitute is to say that F1y, which is equal to zero, plus F2y, which is F2 times the sine of 55 degrees, minus 72 newtons, all of that is equal to zero. So now, let's solve this equation for F2. The first step is to take the negative 72 newtons and bring it over to the other side. 
So that I have 72 newtons equals F2 times the sine of 55 degrees. Now let's divide both sides by the sine of 55 degrees. Now I have an expression on the left side that has nothing but numbers in it. Let's solve that equation for F2. When I put the numbers in my calculator, making sure I'm in degree mode, I find that the numerical value for F2 is 87.90 newtons to four significant figures. So I have one of the forces now. F2 is equal to 87.90 newtons. Now I want to substitute that number into my x equation to figure out what F1 is. F1 is equal to F2, which is equal to 87.90 newtons, times the cosine of 55 degrees. Now put your numbers into your calculator, and I find that F1 is equal to just over 50 newtons, 50.41 newtons. We'll write that into our diagram. So I've solved the problem now. If I had three forces, F1, F2, and F3, that were acting on a single point, and the F2 force is at 55 degrees with respect to the other two forces that are at 90 degrees with respect to each other, then I'll find that their values in order to make that point be in equilibrium are these numerical values. Let's try another problem. Example 5.2. The 350 Newton force is a vertical force as shown. The system is in equilibrium. Find T1 and T2. Again, I'm going to change the T's into F's. And I will name the 350 Newton force F3. Since the system is in equilibrium, the vector sum of all the forces must be equal to zero, which means that F1 plus F2 plus F3 are equal to zero. Now I want to go to this point where all three forces act simultaneously and sketch myself an XY coordinate system with that point at the origin. And when I do that, what I see is that F3 is a completely vertical force, but F1 has both horizontal and vertical components, as do F2. I need to write expressions for F1X and F1Y in terms of F1 and the 20 degree angle. And similarly, I need to write expressions for F2x and F2y in terms of F2 and the 40 degree angle. Let's begin by sketching what those triangles and rectangles look like. So there's what the components of F1 and F2 look like. And my goal is to get rid of this F1 vector that's at a diagonal and to replace it with F1x and F1y two vectors that do the same job as that single vector. And likewise, I want to get rid of the F2 diagonal vector and replace it with the F2x vector and the F2y vector. Now I need to write the horizontal and vertical equations for equilibrium. The sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero, and the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. I need to figure out what is F1x in terms of F1 and the 20 degree angle. And I notice that I have a right triangle now that has F1 as the hypotenuse and F1x as the adjacent side. So I can write that the cosine of 20 degrees is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So that F1x is equal to F1 times the cosine of 20 degrees. Similarly, I see that F1y is the opposite side of the 20 degree angle. So I'll write F1y and F1 related to each other through the sine function. The sine of 20 degrees is equal to the opposite side of the right triangle divided by the hypotenuse. And now F1y is equal to F1 times the sine of 20 degrees. I'll play a similar game for F2. I see that F2x is the adjacent side of the 40 degree angle and F2 is the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So that the cosine of 40 degrees is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And F2x is equal to F2 times the cosine of 40 degrees. Similarly, I see that F2y, the opposite side of the 40 degree angle, so that the sine of 40 degrees is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. 
And now F2y is equal to F2 times the sine of 40 degrees. Now what about F3? It has x and y components. F3x is equal to zero, and F3y in magnitude is 350 newtons. Technically, because F3y is in the downward direction, then there will be a negative sign associated with it. I'll write it in terms of magnitude. So now all three vectors have been broken into horizontal and vertical components. The next step is to take the horizontal pieces and to feed them into the x equation, and then take the vertical pieces and feed them into the y equation. And after that, I'll have two equations and two unknowns. I don't know what F1 is, I don't know what F2 is, but I'll have expressions that relate those things together and then I'll massage those expressions to get out what I'm looking for. Here we go. The sum of the forces in the x direction are equal to F1x plus F2x plus F3x, and that has to be equal to zero. F1x is F1 times the cosine of 20 degrees, but it is acting to the left, and so I need a negative sign associated with that. Negative F1 times the cosine of 20 degrees, plus F2x. F2x is to the right, so it will have a positive sign, so F2 times the cosine of 40 degrees, plus F3x, but F3x equals zero. So now I have an expression that has F1 and F2 in it, along with cosines of various angles. Let's go to the vertical equation. The net force acting in the y direction equals zero. When I go back to my diagram, I see that the net force in the y direction has F1y acting upward, and F2y acting upward, and F3y acting downward. The F1y and the F2y will have positive signs, but the F3y will have a negative sign. Let's write in the expressions, F1y, is F1 times the sine of 20 degrees plus F2y because it's upward, F2 times the sine of 40 degrees plus F3y, but F3y is in the downward direction, so I have a negative 350 newtons, and all of that equals zero. I have two equations and two unknowns. One equation comes from the x condition of equilibrium, and the other equation comes from the y condition of equilibrium. Now, these are ugly equations, but what I claim is that there are two equations and that there are two unknowns. And those two equations, we can figure out an expression for one variable and substitute it into the other equation. And then from that second equation, find the numerical value of the variable. And then once we've got the numerical value of the second variable, substitute that into either one of the of equations and we can figure out the numerical value of the second variable. So what I'm gonna suggest is that we solve the x equation for either variable. Doesn't matter whether it's F1 or F2, I happen to want to solve it for F1. So let's work on the horizontal equation. I've added F1 cosine of 20 degrees to both sides of the equation. And now let's solve that equation for one of the variables. I divide both sides by the thing that's multiplying to F1, and now I have F1 equals F2 cosine of 40 degrees divided by the cosine of 20 degrees. Admittedly an ugly expression, but at least it has F1 by itself. Now I propose to take this expression for F1 and substitute it into the second equation. So now let's plug that expression for F1 into the vertical equation. It looks like this. Zero equals F1, but we said from the first equation that F1 is equal to F2 cosine of 40 degrees divided by the cosine of 20 degrees. All of that times the sine of 20 degrees plus F2 sine of 40 degrees minus 350 newtons. And now I've got it. I see that I've got an expression that's got only F2 in it as the variable. Everything else is numbers. This is not a pretty expression, but you can solve it. 
What you want to do is you want to extract F2 out of that expression and put everything else on the other side, and then you can figure out a numerical value for F2. If you have a TI-89 calculator, at this point, you might want to pull out the TI-solve feature of that and figure out what F2 is. At some point, perhaps, we can have a lesson on what that looks like. But for right now, I will do it algebraically. I'm going to add 350 newtons to both sides. Then I'm going to factor out the F2 variable and take that F2 and isolate it on one side. Here's the first step. Now you've got to be careful along the way because there's lots of sines and cosines and there are 20 degree angles and 40 degree angles. You've got to keep all that straight. Some of you might spot that I have a sine of 20 degrees divided by a cosine of 20 degrees, which is equivalent to tangent of 20 degrees, and you're welcome to use that if you want to. In fact, that's what I'm going to do in the next step. I'm going to factor now the F2 from the right side of the equation. So I've taken the F2 out of both sides, and I've recognized that this sine of 20 divided by the cosine of 20 is the tangent of 20, so I've made that substitution. Now, divide both sides of the equation by the parentheses. Admittedly, that's not a pretty expression, but it's something that I can handle. I can put this into my calculator. That's what I'll do next. My calculator tells me that the four significant figures, F2 is equal to 379.8 newtons. That's a number now that I can use to find F1 from the first equation. Or I could go back to either of the first two equations and use that number, but I like the F1 expression better. So I'll take that number and put it into the F1 equation. Here's what it looks like. And now I substitute the numbers into my calculator, and I get that F1 is a number that's a little less than 310 newtons. And that solves the problem. Now I have numerical values for F1 and F2. I'll go and draw them back up into my figure up here. So let's review what's happened. We have forces in equilibrium, which means that the net force acting on the point in question is equal to zero. When I have forces acting at angles, then I must resolve those forces into horizontal and vertical components using vector methods. So SOKATOA, sine, cosine, and tangent. Then I write two equations, an equation in x and an equation in y, and I pay attention to the direction that the arrows are pointing. After that, I come up with an expression that has horizontal components and vertical components only, and then I use those expressions to help me solve the rest of the problem. This is something that's not easy to do and probably a bit bewildering to see it for the first time. You'll get better and better at it with more practice. For now, that's it.